Hello, welcome to the Kingsway Podcast. Glad you decided to tune in. Uh, it is our first official episode. Uh, you may have watched the intro, you may not have, but I'm glad you're here now. Uh, and I want to let you know right off the bat that this is a podcast designed uh, for us to basically dive into what it means to be uh, a follower of Jesus, a full life experiencer of following Jesus. But this really is about uh, doubts, questions, examining, uh, just trying to be uh, lovers, the, the lovers of learning, I should say. And uh, I think for uh, uh, what we're going to talk about today, it's a good intro into kind of what this uh, should be for you, uh, something that you can maybe take and chew on a little bit. It gives you kind of something maybe this week that you can uh, dissect, look into. And, uh, you know, as I'm trying to figure out what we need to do, uh, where we need to go, I thought it would be fun to just start with something that was kind of part of my journey as I began. Uh, something that it was really a part of one of the first times that I questioned uh, some things and looked and examined some things a little deeper. You know, I'm a pastor's kid and I grew up in the church. And so, you know, for my entire life, I was around a lot of the stories of the Bible and the Bible itself. And so when I looked into some of the things when I got to Ozark Christian College to do my bachelor's degree, uh, I had some things that I was very curious about and I wanted to know some more. And so Today, I just want to talk about one of the things that piqued my curiosity. Uh, it's found in the book of Genesis, and it's it's funny that we'll start there because Genesis actually means new beginning, so we're starting our podcast with a new beginning study, which is kind of fun, but we're going to focus specifically on Genesis chapter Three And so I, I want you to look at uh, Genesis chapter three if you haven't before, and maybe it's now or maybe it's later, and maybe it just gives you a chance to maybe uh, see specifically exactly what I'm going to talk about today, because I'm not going to mention every word that's in Genesis three or even all the things mentioning up to it. But what I want to try to do is catch you up on why it's so difficult to read Genesis, why Genesis is a book that, like myself, I found myself struggling, even at Bible college, to understand it completely even though I'd grown up in the church my whole life. And one of the reasons is that is because Genesis is one of the oldest books in the Bible, and it creates some big gaps between what, what is written there and where we're at now. And because of that, it causes some miscommunications and things to be difficult to understand. The way it was outlined for me in, in Bible college was called the hermeneutical gap. It means the understanding between what the author said originally and where we're at now, there is a gap in understanding, in culture, in language, in style of writing and what they were desiring to communicate. And what we have now is very different than what they were trying to sometimes express or say or use as the proper tool. Now, the easiest way to illustrate this for you and I is not to use written language. It's actually use technology because technology has changed so much. Um, I was talking about this with Jed. Hey, Jed. Jed's right over there. Uh, before uh, we started, and one of the things that I think illustrates this the best is actually your cell phone. Uh, if you took out your cell phone and you thought about this for a second, all the things that are in this new electronic device, uh, you have a camera, the internet, um, you have the ability to, to follow a map, uh, to play a game, uh, to literally video chat <laughs> with someone across the world. Um, and that is an amazing tool. But if you go back just 60 or 70 years and you were to hand this to someone in the 19, oh, I don't know, 40s, 50s, or 60s, or maybe even as back as the 30s and 20s, and you were to hand this to them, they would be at a loss trying to have them communicate then what this was to their friends after seeing it they would even be at a loss even more because they would be like, I don't even know how to describe what I just held in my hand. It had all these things at a short range and that you could use it very quickly. They would find themselves at a struggle or at a loss to communicate the technology difference in just a less than a century in technology change. And that gap would be a difficult thing to breach or to reach across. And so for us traveling back almost 4,000 years plus to get to the book of Genesis, we have to approach it with humility. We have to approach this, this with, with a sense of going, we may not completely understand right now the fullness of the picture. And it, it helped me a lot when I started really looking at the story of chapter three in Genesis of creation and really humanity's intro 
And why that's important is because I think I came with my own understanding, my own ideas, and I put them into the context of what Genesis is, and it came with some gaps. And so as we just take a few minutes to dive into this, I want you to approach this not necessarily with your history or what you know, but thinking about it with fresh eyes, thinking about this with fresh eyes, because there's a singular concept in, Gen- in Genesis chapter three that I want to point out to you. In chapter three, the context is Jesus, uh, Jesus ha, the word that was <laughs> the spirit that was John 1, 1, but God himself has used the spirit and used his word to create life in chapter one, and then all six days that have led up to day seven now have been good. In fact, God describes it as seven times as the things that he creates from this darkness of nothing to this full-fledged planet with plants and animals and birds and even man and woman and humankind. And at chapter three, we have this focal point where all things are good until they're not. And the two characters that are at the center of this are characters that were introduced to as Adam and Eve. Adam is the first human character that is created, the male version. And then Eve is created from Adam, and she is the first female character, all created by God. Now, when I was taught this, I heard those names or those descriptions as specific as a name, right? I even have um, a family member that's named Adam. And so I'm like, I have a face with that name. But when you look at the original language and you try to bridge the gap of all this time, you recognize, and one of the things I needed to hear and learn, and I want you to know, is that that Hebrew word for Adam is actually translated man or mankind or humanity. And so, though we see it as a name, it actually has more of a title. And what's even crazier is when you look at the the word Eve as a name, it's translated into ish or ishba, which is living. And in fact, when Adam calls Eve this in the text, he says, this is the mother of all living, is the concept. And so if you take those two titles slash names and you put them together, it's humanity living. It's humanity living. And those names start to give us a picture or a concept that maybe the the picture or the illustration or the hermeneutical gap that is between what we're reading and what we sometimes see as the surface things in English with our background and our simplistic understanding needs to give us more space in Genesis chapter 3. In Genesis chapter 3, we see the fall of man and we see the fall of woman, human living, human life. They make the choice to not listen to what God says and to listen to what they believe is right. It's the way that God set it up. He said, you can live what I have in what I have made as good, and you can choose to believe that that is good, or you can choose this fruit that will allow you to define what is good and right and what is evil. And like most of us would identify with the human life that is laid out in Adam and Eve is they make the improper choice to go their own way. And what's crazy is from Genesis chapter 3 to all the way to Genesis chapter 11, where the linchpin switch to Abraham or Abram at the time is made, and then the rescue plan is laid out through the rest of Genesis through chapter 50, You have from 3 to 11 the really harsh consequences that come when human lives, human living is defined by their own standards of good and evil. And we, they, did a terrible job. And in fact, the very first thing that happens when Adam and Eve are given this understanding of right and wrong is they hide from even each other. This couple that is together just a few verses before is naked and totally unashamed. And in a moment when they eat, they feel the burden of judgment from each other's eyes. And they see that they cannot trust one another. And they're unsure of who or what is right and wrong. And they hide 
from that guilt or hide from that possible shame. And you and I, I know it helps us recognize that we do see that in the world around us right now, that there's tons of of inconsistencies and difficulties to know what is right and wrong and how to act. There are some clear things that we can see and celebrate, but in a moment it can be stolen and we can feel like we are yet again in fog, yet again it is lost from us, yet again we feel in darkness. And what I love about Genesis 3 is it really lays out uh, the, the continued story that is started from page one to the end of the story that ends with Jesus return and full life being completed, that we are underneath and should be completely consistently found in the authority of God and that his voice is the one we should be listening to and his voice is the one that we should trust. I know for me, this was helpful in knowing that even from the beginning, the story of the Bible is true to the gospel of Jesus. And though sometimes there may be some things that hermeneutically we have to jump the gap or figure out or strive to understand or even doubt and explain and uh, really examine, there is central truth to the rescue plan and the faithfulness and the truth that is found in the story and redemption of Jesus and God himself from the very beginning. I love that this can be laid out in a simple way. I, I, I have this little thing here called the Laugh and Learn Bible for Kids. And some a reference in a thing that's written by Phil Vischer, the guy that originally did the Veggie Tales, which I think is so cool, but I'm a 90s kid. Uh, but he lays out here in Genesis 3, the section that I wanted to point out, and he has this little thing that he says is the takeaway from Genesis 3. And it's just this simple little prayer. And I thought it was awesome because I read it and I thought, that's it. That's it. Genesis chapter 3, after the fall and everything that's gone on and they listened to the wrong voice, he says the prayer from Genesis chapter 3 is believing and doing this. He says, you should pray, dear God, help us listen to the voice that would go your way instead of our own way. Amen. And that would be my heart. After listening to this and understanding that maybe human life in its heart, in its core, from the very beginning, has been about believing that God has something good and that his life is full and good and that you and I merely have to lay down and listen and relax and open our minds and our ears to what he says and he's calling us to and not go our own way or not be distracted or pulled apart, but pulled to him. And in that, we find full life, real life, hope, and Eden. Well, thank you so much for tuning in and um, pay attention and look for upcoming videos. I'm sure we'll have more coming soon. But as always, have a great and glorious day in the Lord. We'll see you later. <laughs>